Hello, this is Judge Jim Gray, and you are here with me in the judges' chambers. Our discussion today will talk about the fact that words mean something. Now, we in the legal profession use words as our building blocks, and we understand that there are shades of meaning between different words, or among different words. For example, there are more dialects in the world that do not draw the distinction between the word stranger and the word enemy. Consequently, of course, if you're in some small village and someone you don't know comes into your town, he is immediately a stranger. No, he's also an enemy. And you can imagine the amount of violence, unnecessary violence that's occurred because of that problem, or also a lot of lost opportunities. So we think as human beings in words. And if your vocabulary is limited and you do not understand shades of meaning, your thinking then isn't as strong as it might be. Other concepts, for example, we've all seen the road sign, slow traffic, keep right. Well, I'm not slow traffic, so I'll stay in the left lane. But, meaning the kind of the same thing, if you see something like left lane only to pass, oh, I'm not passing, so I'll go into the right lane. It just depends upon how we as human beings consider these things. Another one, really important, is the difference between the word solve and resolve. Now again, as a judge, I've seen this countless numbers of times. Most of the time when we have human problems, there's no solution. For example, if someone unnecessarily or wrongly trips you and you break your ankle, well, the solution to that would be to unbreak your ankle, to have kept that from happening in the first place. But that's just not possible. So what we have in our, phys in our human being contacts mostly are resolutions. We take you, we try to dust you off, aim you in the right direction, and do something to resolve the case, usually by paying some amount of money. So if we're talking to young people or old people, understand that concept that there really isn't any solution to most things. One more thing. It seems that sweeping the country, uh, there is now kind of a, a idea that when you give someone a thank you for something that you appreciated them doing, instead of like when I was raised saying, you're welcome, now instead most of our young people say, what? No problem. Well, what does that imply? Well, if it had been a problem, if it had been d difficult, I wouldn't have done it. But, well, that's okay. It was no problem. Of course, I do understand in Spanish the word for in effect, you're welcome, is de nada, which is almost the same thing as no problem. But you're welcome means I'm happy to have helped you. So maybe you can join me in trying to reverse that trend. And when someone thanks you and they mean it and it's appreciated, say, you're welcome. So this is Judge Jim Gray in the judges' chambers. Thank you for letting me share these thoughts with you. And your response is, I hope it's your welcome. See you soon. Hello, this is Judge Jim Gray, and welcome back with me in the judges' chambers. When I'm talking with young attorneys or even older ones, I continually tell them or ask them the question, what is the biggest asset that we have as practicing law? And the answer is, I hope you agree, it's our integrity. You know, you're pretty much not going to be worth anything to your clients, past, present, or future, as well as yourself and those who are de depending upon you if you lose your integrity. How long does it take to build up a reputation of integrity? A long time, I think you would agree. How long does it take to lose a reputation of integrity? And the answer is pretty much like that. I still remember sitting in the judge's lunchroom quite a while ago, and someone said, well, Joe, who have you, what are you doing? And he says, oh, I'm in trial with such and such an attorney. And all the other attorneys around the table groaned. I mean, that was the reputation of that attorney. You don't want that to happen to you. By the way, if your children see what you do as parents, and that is your integrity. In fact, John Wooden, that great coach at UCLA, used to say, character is what you do when no one else is watching. That's when your integrity comes forward. And your children, of course, the idea of do as I say, don't as I do, doesn't work. A great light opera is Into the Woods, Stephen Sondheim, and it ends by saying with the song, children will listen, and they will. By the way, if your three-year-old starts using four-letter words, guess where your three-year-old heard them? It came from you. So cherish your integrity, work on your integrity, and keep it steadfast. Children will listen, and so will everyone else. That's what I believe from the judges' chambers. I hope you agree. See you next time.